So let's review two formulas that you'll see quite often in algebra books. One is called the midpoint formula. So in the midpoint formula, what it finds is the point in the middle between two other points, just like it sounds. Some key things there is the word point, means your answer is a point, which means it should look like a point with all of those things that ordered pairs have, parentheses and commas, and mid, it's in the middle. And the best way to find the place in the middle is to average. And so that's all you have to do. So here's an example. I have two points, A and B. So let's go ahead and plot them both. So A is negative 3, 1. Remember, x comes first, then y. So we're going to go negative 3 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3. That's left. Up 1. And we'll find our point A. And then we'll plot point B, which is at 4, 4. Remember, it's x first, then y. So we're going to walk out 4 in the positive x direction, up 4 for the positive y direction. And there's point B. And we're trying to find the place halfway between A and B. So if you made a line segment AB, we're going to be looking for the point in the middle. So if you go ahead and plot your points, you can see if you're, the answer we get is reasonable. I'm going to guess it's somewhere in quadrant 1 when we get our answer. So like I said, it's the middle between, and we find that by averaging. And so the formula looks like this. x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. Add the 2x values, divide by how many? Strict average. y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. Add your two y values and divide by 2. So for this particular example, you'll see that we have, so my x sub 1, it doesn't matter who's 1 and 2, right? Just be consistent. So this x plus this x, so I have negative 3 plus 4 all over 2. And for my y's, I have 1 plus 4 over 2. So let's simplify those fractions. Negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. So positive 1 half and 5 halves. So 0.5 and 2.5. That's pretty darn close. OK, so that's the midpoint formula. And it's a point, and it's the average. So you can remember that. The other one is called the distance formula. And the distance formula is really just Pythagorean's theorem in disguise. So whenever you're asked for the distance formula, if you can't remember it, you probably will remember that the Pythagorean theorem right, a squared plus b squared is c squared where A, B, and C are the sides of a right triangle. C is the hypotenuse. So here, let me show you how the distance formula really is just the Pythagorean theorem. So I have two new points now, P and Q. So we'll go ahead and plot those. So P is at the point 0, 2. So 0 in the x direction. So don't go left or right. Just stay on the origin. And then up 2. So there's point P. Point Q, I'm going to go out 5. 1, 2. 5 and up 4, that's 2, 4, somewhere about in there. So the distance formula, is, instead of giving me the midpoint of the line segment, is going to give me the length of the line segment. So distance formula gives me this length right here. So here comes the triangle. We're going to go straight down from Q. We're just going to run that down toward the x-axis. And from P, we're going to draw a line parallel to the x-axis. And there is a right triangle where the length that we're looking for is the hypotenuse. So that's the C value. Okay. Well, let this side over here be A. Well, that's just the difference in the two y values between P and Q. So I have the difference in the y values for A, B, this other leg of the triangle, is the difference in the two x values. So the x value from P and the x value from Q, I just need the difference between those. So here's what the formula looks like. And I'm going to do it with a C here. 
So c squared equals Pythagorean theorem. So a is going to be the difference in my y values. y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared. So here's a squared. And b squared is the difference in my x values. x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared. So c squared is a squared plus b squared. Now typically we don't see it written exactly like this, but I'm just going to change some numbers around, and I don't really want c squared. I want it to be just c. I don't want it squared. I just want that length, so I'm going to square root both sides. And I know you know you can't just drop those, otherwise we wouldn't go through this whole other rigmarole. So it's going to be, and we'll go ahead and use d for distance and not c for hypotenuse. So distance equals square root, and usually we write our x's first, x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared. So I have a little cheer I sometimes do with my students to get the order right here. And I don't have a word for subtracting in here. So you have to find the difference first. So subtract, and then square them, add them, then root them. Okay, so you have to square them first, and then add them, and then you can root them to get the distance formula. So let's go ahead and practice with the two points that we have. So it's the difference in your x's squared. Okay, so now here's a technicality. You know when you do slope, it matters. You have to go from the same point to the same point each time. Well, because we're squaring the differences this time, right, if you change the order of your subtraction, what happens is your number is off by a negative sign. Right? You get the same value, same absolute value, but opposite sign. Since I'm squaring, that kind of takes it away, so you don't have to be as careful. So I'm going to go 5 minus 0 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to start scrunching. So I've got 5 minus 0 is 5 squared, 25. 4 minus 2 is 2 squared is 4. So the distance, the length of that line segment, distance between those two points, is the square root of 29. So remember, your distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem. And this is the formula. And here is the midpoint formula.